You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you love me too much. Too much of excess love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, 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 welcome. Excess. Welcome, 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 one. Welcome, all. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Too much joy, excess love. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, welcome. Glory to God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Somebody go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Thank you, Jesus. You're amazing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. All your promises are yes and amen. You're not a man that you should lie. This song is filled with a lot of scriptures. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Share the broadcast. Tap in. When you share, you're tapping in. When you share the broadcast, it means you're tapping in. You're connecting. Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to share. Hallelujah. Too much of excess love. My God. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Too much of, too much of excess love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too much of excess love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Somebody go ahead and share. Share. Hit share on your phone. Yes. Go ahead and hit share. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. 
to the broadcast. I have some important information to share tonight. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and tap on the button that says share. Yes. Share it with your friends. Share it with family. Share it with those who you care for. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go ahead and share. My God. Too much of excess love. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. Everybody knows somebody who need to pray. We all know someone who need to come and pray with us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and share. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Too much. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and, you know, let us bless the Lord. The psalmist said, I'll bless thee at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. His praise should continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. You know, many of us and many times we have so much to give God thanks for, but we are so busy. We are so busy. We caught up thinking about our current situation. Welcome, welcome. If you are just joining, welcome to dinner with God. You know, many times we are so caught up with our own issues. We are so caught up with our own life. We are we are caught up with other things that is not even necessary when. The very important thing that God is doing in our life, we never take the time out. We never ever take the time out to, to give God thanks for the little things. Yes, for the little things that he is doing in our life. We never, we never take the time out to, you know, to glorify him. And this moment, I, I just want to say, I thank God for this ministry you know it has helped me a lot many times i don't feel like coming and praying many times you know because i'm worried about my family i'm worried about my life i'm worried about you know being in a foreign country and in school full time and unemployed and covid19 but we, we miss the part where, in spite of what's going on, God is taking care of us. He's right there taking care of us. We miss that part. We're so caught up with, you know, we have a little bit of headache. We have a little, you know, sickness and, and little stuff, you know, in spite of everything that's going on. Babies are born sick. Some people didn't wake up this morning. So if you are even sick, if you are here and you are sick, you are here. You are alive. There is hope for tomorrow. Many people didn't make it out of their sickness. Many people didn't overcome. But we are here. Let us give God thanks. The little things that we overlook 
is the very thing that God is expecting us to praise him for. And I've been bombarded with a lot of people call me with their testimonies and I and I I am joyful. I'm happy for them. I said, yes, Lord, at least this one, I don't have to pray for this one for husband or for a house or for a car because, Lord, you have opened the door for them. You know, I might be praying for things that I'm still praying for, but the things that I'm praying with you for, praying to God, seeking his face for it. He's opened that door, opening that door. But the very thing I'm asking him for, it's not here yet. But in the midst of all the prayers, God is saying, you're still praying. You're asking me to do this for these people and I'm doing it. But um, there's a reason why I didn't release it unto you yet. People of God, many times, you know, I reflect we have to just sit down sometimes and reflect. Think about things that he done for us. That we didn't deserve. But sometimes that little one thing that we are asking him for daily and he's saying, nah. Sometimes some things we are asking God for, we'll never get it. Because he don't want that for us. He will never give those things to us. He's got better, bigger, greater. He said he can go beyond our imagination. God has so much in store. So much in store for us. But yet we are asking him for these little things that don't even make sense. We are asking him to grant us this. To grant us that. When deep down he's saying, focus on the big picture. I have healed these people around you. What makes you think I'll never breed upon you? I have given them homes. I've given them multiple cars. What makes you think you won't get yours? But whatever you're asking for, you're not in alignment so I'm not going to release it because if I release it now, these people around you, they'll hurt you. You might have an accident trying to go show them the car or trying to invite them in that home. They might hurt you. Some things might just hurt us because we're not prepared to handle it. We don't know how to deal with it. Hallelujah. Let us give God thanks for the little bit we see let us give God thanks for the big things that we cannot see that our faith is bringing into our direction. Let us glorify him for the people that he has blessed around us. Sometimes these are the things that will open the doors for us. We need to be grateful. We need to be happy. We need to rejoice with other people when God bless them. Because the very thing we are asking God for, he is giving it to someone else that we know. So we need to rejoice with them. We need to pray with them. We need to have patience with God. We need to be patient. Yes, patient. He said a moment in his presence is greater than that thousand years that you were waiting and none of us here will ever live to see a thousand years. So let us wait on the Lord until he move in our corner or we enter in our season. It's true. You know, many times I get caught up praying for other people, fasting for them, and I, and I, I overlook my own blessings. I did. I, I I thank God for the little things he gave me. When I applied for my citizenship, they denied me the first time. And a year later, I went back and I got it. 
And one day I was coming home from work and he said to me, the time when he didn't release it, if he had, I would walk away because he was working on me. Sometimes God don't give something to you. It's not because he don't love you. It's because you're not prepared. And I'm not going to lie, I cry. I cry tears. I said, how could God say this to me? He said, if he had given me my citizenship at the time when I first applied, because I had plans. Sometimes we make plans that does not include God. So I was ashamed and I repent. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will rebuke you, will bring things back to your memory. So you can repent. Sometimes no one has to tell you to repent because the Holy Spirit will bring things back to your remembrance. Mm -hmm. And therefore we give God all the praise. We give him all the glory. We give him all the honor. We are so busy paying attention to what everybody else is receiving from God. But we don't see the small blessings that he is giving us. He allows us to see these things to let us know that he's still there. Many people receive so many blessings and we would never hear about it. The other day, I went to school to pick up some paperwork and I, they gave me this envelope. In this envelope is over four years of work that I did. And I came home and I put it down, never opened it. But I put it where I'm going to open it. And I hear a voice say to me, you don't appreciate nothing I did for you. I said, what? The Lord began to speak to me and said, I don't appreciate what he did for me. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you brought the thing home and you place it down for days. I know what's inside of the envelope, people of God. It's my hard work. But I could have never done it without him. If I was the professor, I would have failed me. Why? All these years I'm in school, it's the first time I got this grade. It was low. I was distracted. But when you don't deserve something, God knows. You show your favor. I'm sitting here and I'm saying, when I look at my thesis, I was embarrassed because I did a bad job. It's the first time I made so much mistakes. It's the first time in years, I was so distracted. Why? I was focusing on doing the work of God. So he took care of my bad job that I did. People of God, on this piece of envelope, this envelope, I'm just going to cover my professor's name on it. It says from the College of Theology. Yes. And... I don't want to, you know, expose. Uh, I'm not good at exposing other people information, but here, this is, it's my name written on it. It's the master's degree. I did a bad job because I was focusing on my own private life and the ministry. But on my schoolwork, I didn't do a good job. But because I was working for the Lord, mostly, he favored me. He favored me. 
But when I hear the Lord said, I don't appreciate. I said, wait a minute. And I begin to thank him. Because he was the one. All my life. When I came to this country, I came here to study physical therapy because I came here with a, with a degree in what you call it, Swedish massage therapy. So I already had the experience. And I went to school for all kinds of things. But today, I look at what the Lord did. That was not me. Because of preaching, because of sitting here at night and some most mornings and be preaching and ministering and focusing on relationship and life and my current situation, I almost failed my exams. But God, and the only reason why I'm saying this is just a token. This is just a token of what the Lord is doing. There is so much in store for you. And there is so much in store for myself. For I. But we need to pay attention. We need to be focused. So we are focusing on the things that are not even relevant. When God is saying, I am here. Turn around. Come to me. I feel so ashamed. I ask God to forgive me. Because, you know, I'm saying this is a token because there is a lot more to come. What I'm doing now, to me, is more important than the paper. But it was years of hard work. Years. Hallelujah. One doctor fired me and she said, I can't use you because we have the same, we are on the same level. I can't pay you. You see, when God is working things out for you, you're only looking at your curse. You don't look at your blessings. You never look at your blessings. It's time for us to look at the small things that God is doing in our life. I'm here focusing on the ministry. I'm focusing on my, 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 my home, my marriage, my relationship with my family, my children. And I almost failed my exams. That's why I couldn't talk about it. I was embarrassed. I know I had a low marks because the day when I was turning in the paper, I realized I messed up big time, but I didn't care anymore. I just dumped it all in because it was stressing me out. It was in my way. People of God. Somebody said, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. But I just want you to know I'd rather keep it simple. It's not about the paper. Yes, without this paper, there are some doors that you can't enter. So we need some paperwork, something, some form of paperwork. But it's all about what you're doing for the Lord. In my book, in my book, I'd rather do the physical work, but I still have to do that. People of God, I'm here to encourage you. If the Lord drop it in your spirit to go back to school, do it. If the Lord, yeah, I'm, I'm encouraging someone here tonight. I just came to encourage someone because I brought the paperwork home and it's been sitting for days. Mm -hmm. Yes, for days. Didn't open it because I'm not excited. I appreciate the fact that I finished that part of the program. I thank God. I knock on wood. I don't have to go back for another master's degree in life because this is accredited. I can apply to any school anywhere in the world. Fine. But I'd rather do the work of God. Mm -hmm. For some people, they are up here. But for me, I'm humbled. People of God, 
when you are humbled, God will exalt you. But he said, I wasn't grateful because I didn't open the envelope. You know, but I'm thankful. Spending all these years in school, it becomes normal. You know what I'm saying? So be grateful for what he's doing in your life. Just be grateful for your current situation. Stop fussing. Stop rushing. Just look around you. If your place is a mess, thank God it's your place. Even if you're renting it, thank God for it. Give God thanks for what you have, what he has blessed you with. And this piece of paper, I glorify him in all aspects of my life because I remember the day he told me to go to school. I said, I'm not doing that. I can't afford it. I was getting ready to go and study something else. Bible school is just going to mess me up. And he said, I'll take care of you. And how he's taking care of me? I'm selling anointing oil. He said, supply my people with anointing oil and pray a shawl. That's what he said to me. That's what he said. He said, supply my people with oil and shawl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever God tells us to do, people of God, do it. What, it it seems difficult. Sometimes God will tell you, Go and borrow for somebody else. He will, because remember, if you read Second Kings properly, Second Kings chapter 6, remember when the, the men told Elisha, the, 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 the prophet, that they're going to build a place where they can worship, where they can meet. It means that a place of worship. And one of them borrowed an axe, and the axe fell in the water. And he called the man of God and the man of God said, show me where. And he chop a piece of stick and throw it in that direction and the thing float. People of God, yes, you can borrow to build. Because he said, oh, and it was borrowed. He didn't tell the man of God that he's going to borrow an axe to come and help to build. So I'm here to let you know, people of God, sometimes God will tell you to do something and it will seem complicated. It will seem like it will never happen. It's impossible. And you have to borrow. But be reminded that the same God who allow you to borrow will allow you to bring it back in good condition. Because the axe was returned. God will allow you to borrow when I was reading the scripture today, I had the revelation. I said, look at God. Sometimes God will tell you to do something that you cannot afford. But it can be done. If you are wise, ask him and he will give you directions. Because when he told me that I'm not grateful for what he did for me, I said, Lord, what is it? He said, you brought the paper home and you sit it down for days. You didn't open it and look at it. So the first thing I do, I didn't look at that paper. I took out the paperwork that have my grades on it. And I was ashamed. But I still graduated because God is with me. <laughs> because I've done good all the time. And this time, because I'm distracted. I'm saying this because I'm encouraging someone. You might have a lot of kids. You might have no kids. You might have a husband with a lot of problems. You might have no husband. So it's either you have or you don't have. God can still bless you in spite of your situation. Whatever God said for you to do, he will make it possible for it to be done. Don't complain. Stop whining about these little things. Babies are born sick and they still live. If you are sick, don't worry about it. God is keeping you alive, right? So why are you stressed out? Why are you so stressed out? If you are having a little pain here and there, you're still alive. There is hope for tomorrow. Focus on the thing that God is saying, do it. Stop worried about your situation. I got into trouble with God again. So I'm here sharing this testimony. Yeah. I got in trouble with God because 
It seems as if I didn't care. I just throw the paper down. Mm, it's sitting right there. Mm, don't worry about it because I know it's safe. So the first thing I did, I pick up the paper and I started to look at all the mistakes I make. I, I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm looking at the error, my error, because I cannot correct it. I cannot go back. So this means my next thesis that I have to write it doesn't matter what's going on in my life. Fasting and prayer. Sometimes I think I fast and I pray too much. Sometimes I think I don't pray enough. People of God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm just saying this because I want you to get it. This is life. Don't sit in one spot and let nobody post you. Sit forever. Wait. Some women are sitting down in, and they don't do anything. They don't leave the house because they don't want to miss that phone call. And God is saying, move. Today, I went to church and I hear a pastor said, if you want the situation to change, you got to make a change. And it's true. It's true. You know, I, sometimes I want someone to minister to me. When I'm done here, people are calling. They want to talk. I'm drained. So I need to be ministered to at times. I need to just relax and hear the word of God. And I'm grateful. It doesn't matter what sermon it is. I'm grateful when I sit down to hear the word of God. I give thanks to God. I'm, th I'm thankful. If you give me a dollar, if you know me personally, I'm a very thankful person. I'll tell you thank you. It doesn't matter how small. I'm grateful. You know, we are in the month of October. Today is the 18th. And um, according to the Holy Spirit, all these things that I'm talking about, the oil, the package with the frankincense and the salt, is it so? The frankincense and the dirt and the, uh, the wooden cross. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, yes, the holy oil and so, yeah. So the Lord said everything 10% off. The prayer shawl, 10% off. And because the month of October is my birth month, I have a birthday coming up. So what God is doing is telling me to give back. Because if they're going at 10% off, it means I'm giving back. So go ahead and make sure you order your stuff before October is done. Because after October 31st, it's back to 100% the price. Because during COVID-19, all these things, they, the prices went up. I have to order them all the way from Israel. And they take a long time to get here. Mm-hmm. Because I'm dealing with these buyers over there in Israel. So it's more than likely that come next year, I'm going over there. <laughs> it's more than likely come next year, 2021, God's willing, I'll be flying over to Israel. I want to go to Jordan River. I want to do a tour of some of those historical sites. I call it because exactly what it is, those historical sites, quite a few uh, places of interest. I have to go. Thank you, Jesus. So I just came out here tonight to encourage a few people. Sister Keisha Ellis. You need the cross for your car. Well, the number is at the bottom of the screen. You can order, yeah, through Zelle, Cash App, whichever way you can, you know, just go ahead. It's 10% during the month of October. And my early birthday gift has arrived. Hear that? It's a painting. I'm so thankful. I am so grateful. God, I've been good. Yes, this is an early birthday gift. This is just a early gift. And I appreciate it so much. You know, when I see it, I just smile. I say, thank God. Hallelujah. God has been good. So I'm here to let you know, I'm giving according to what the Lord is saying, but I'm also being blessed because this 
this is a blessing. It came, you know, graduation was in, uh, I think it was in August. Yeah, somewhere in August. Graduation was when I was away doing charity. The day I did charity was the same day that I had graduation. So I thank God it was on the internet, Zoom. So I thank God. I, I th I'm grateful. You see, when these little things, we have to be appreciative. The life that we live and the problems of this world will let us overlook some milestones. But let's just take, you know, a moment and reflect on the things that God is doing in our life. <laughs> it's, it's my picture. They, uh, some, it's my picture. It's one of my pictures that was on social media that they use and make this painting. Yeah, so I guess they baked it. I don't know, because I'm not an artist, but I think that's what they did. This picture, this same picture here, it's on so it's my it's on my Facebook page. If you go into my view my profile, you will see it there, you know, and I'm grateful. And I think this was taken, I don't remember. It's over two years ago because it's a different car. So this picture is over two years old. Hallelujah. Because it's a different car. So I, I know, I remember the Sunday when I took that picture. I just got off the pulpit and I was on fire. <laughs> and one of the young pastors at the church, he took my picture when I was leaving. Thank you, Jesus. People of God, let me tell you something. I'm only here talking about this situation to encourage someone. Sometimes we have to take a moment and reflect on the things that God has done for us throughout the year. We just have to take a moment to reflect because we are so busy, especially in this time, worried about COVID-19, worry if you're going to get it. Some people don't want to go to the doctor because they think they have COVID and they don't care. But I'm here to let you know, if God is keeping you all this time, just reflect on the things that he did for you. Just reflect. Just reflect. Just reflect on the things that God did for you. Since March, because we, th th this pandemic broke out in March. You know, we heard about it in February, but in March is when the shutdown started. So let us just reflect. God bless you. I thank you, you know, for the wonderful comments. But I'm just here to say, sometimes when you don't reflect on the things that God and show and give thanks to God, he watches you. I was so busy caught up with my own problems and my issues. And, the, you know, the spirit of the Lord began to say to me, you're ungrateful. You put those things down, you never pick it up. And the first piece I pick up was the one with, with the scores. Because that's my interest. And I begin to look at my mistakes, the errors that I make. And I begin to, you know, fuss. I, I, yeah, I'm just fussing. I, I, and I remember what happened. And you see, this is the problems that we have today. We, we worry about the wrong things. And the Lord began to say to me, the envelope is sitting in front of you and you're focusing on your errors that you cannot correct. <laughs> so I pick up the envelope tonight and I decided to share a little bit of it with you. I'm grateful, you know. I'm celebrating with a half a glass of water because God has been good to me. I'm grateful. I never have to do that program again because it's done. That part of it is over. I'm thankful. He is. He is. You know, so I'm just talking about my flaws. So you could know that. Stop beating up on yourself. You can do it. You might be saying, I didn't finish school and I, I would like to finish. Just to, to, to prove to myself that I can achieve something. Do it. 
do it. If the Lord is poking you to do it, do it. Don't sit down and beat up on yourself. You know, somebody said college is for fools. College is not for everyone. But I encourage you, if you can, if you have the ability, try. Don't count yourself short. Try. Don't count. You see, I like to, in, you know, invite people to my circle. I like to introduce people to do, to try things that will, will uplift them, to motivate you. Another thing that Pastor was talking about today, I think it was self-motivation. Encourage yourself. Be motivated. Stop talking about your childhood, how bad it was. Talk about, you know, something good to change that, that thought. Something that when your siblings hear, they can be motivated as well. You know, somebody will say, wow, I could try that. You can be a motivator. Somebody say you're not in the sepulchre. You're, you, yeah, you're not. You're out here walking on top of it. You're not in the mortuary. You're in the sanctuary. You're walking all over. Be grateful for what God is doing in your life. That right there is five years of hard work. Started 2014. And it was not an easy run. I stopped. At one point, I, I tried to quit. There were times when I never liked my professor. Yes. People have got it. It's not easy. I remember when my daughter was in college. There was a time when she said, I'm not going back. I'm just going to stay and do a program down at the community college. And the first semester she did, she said, Mommy, I'm leaving. I'm not going to stay because they don't have any advisors. You know, she, she started to get technical. She said in college they got advisors, but down the street, they don't have those things. There is no help. I said, oh. And then she said, Mommy, what are you waiting on? You're supposed to go back. No, I'm almost done. And you say you want to go back. Mommy, you can go back. Now it's your turn. I'm done with school. So you can go back. Because I wanted, I want to make sure I fill my promise to her. I said, I'll make sure you finish college. People have got let me tell you, whatever you ask God for, he will give it to you. This was no plan of mine, preaching on social media. No! This was nothing for this. This is uh, this is above me. This is out of my league. And if I can do it, and the Lord is talking on your heart, you can do it too. If I, if God can use me, He can use you. Tonight, I'm just motivating somebody who think they can't do it. If God remember me. After all my wrongdoings, you are in his plan. You are in his plan. This piece of paper is accepted all over the world because it's accredited. But what I'm saying here. Many people never get to the point that they wanted to be. It's not too late. I'm here to encourage you tonight. It's not too late. When I came to this country, I came as a massage therapist. And I started to do CNA work. I began to do office administration work, all kinds of stuff. And nothing ever satisfied me. I'm very hard to please. I have my goals, but I settle for nothing just to take care of my family. I'm here to let you know, take a step. Don't worry about where you are in life. Worry about where you're going. The problem is we worry too much about the past and the devil will tell us we can't do it. You can do it. I challenge 50 people tonight. I challenge 50 people tonight to take a step and push. 
my God. I Listen to me. I'm challenging you to push. You can do it. It doesn't matter where in the world you live. You can do it. All my life I've been in school. All my life. If I'm not in school, I'm pregnant. All my life. I don't have money. All I have to show is different, different piece of paper that I achieve along the way and some children. But I can tell you this. God is pleased. Why? Because I'm working for him. I'm not chasing the money. You see me sitting down here talking to you. I'm not chasing money. Because if I was chasing money, it would be different. It would have been different. I say this all the time. I'm not here permanently. So I'm doing whatever I have to do to please God. The earth is not our permanent home. So whatever God tell you to do, do it. Do it. Celebrate yourself. Thank God for your achievements. There is always something to thank God for. Give him praise. Thank him. Your children are healthy. They are in their right mind. Thank him. These are things we have to thank God for. Thank him. You are healthy. You are in your right mind. You might be feeling a little bit of pain, but you are healthy. Because if you wasn't healthy, you would not be on social media. So give God praise. You might be looking for healing. Receive your healing now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive it. I came to invite you to be motivated. Somebody has to do it. Maybe that's why you're here tonight. To hear what, I, what I'm saying about, you know, my being ungrateful because God blessed me in order to finish to my exams and everything, even though my score is the worst of all these years and I'm disappointed, but I'm still grateful to God because I graduated. Yes. How many of you would come here and sit down and tell the truth? Pride won't let some people speak the truth. This is why a lot of people won't like what we're doing here. Because we keep it real. There is no, listen, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. We keep it real. This is not, this, listen, this is a no judgment zone. Don't judge anybody. If you cannot pray for someone, leave them alone. God will send someone else to pray for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever you refuse to do, God will use somebody else to do it. And then he will charge you. Be honest with yourself. If you are not where you were expecting to be, it's time to make that change. If you are not, I'm going to repeat it. If you are not where you were expecting to be, it's time for you to make that change. Only you can make that change. No one can do it for you. Even if someone holds you by the hand, you know, they say you can force the horse to the water, but you cannot make him drink it. So only you can make that change. Only you can make a change. There is no broken vessel God cannot mend. So if you're going to say, I was a school dropout. I dropped out of school so many times. I even dropped out of college. <laughs> yes, because I was not working. I was unemployed and I have to quit school to find a job. And the job took me away from school. But the next semester, I was back. I'm just saying, be motivated. It might take you a little longer than you would expect it to. Maybe you're a little bit dusty, you know, because you have not opened the book in a while. But once you open a parachute, then it will fly. 
Your mind is like a parachute. Once you open, oh, and let me tell you, one of the things I learned at an older age, you learn faster. Yes, because your brain is older. So when you grab something, you don't let it go. <laughs> yeah. You achieve more. When it's good, when you were able to do it at a young age, you know, because you wouldn't feel like you're behind. And yes, there will be a lot of young people in the classroom with you, but so what? Don't worry about them. They got their goals and you got yours too. <laughs> Don't worry about someone else in the classroom next to you. Focus on the big picture. Focus on the piece of paper. Focus on it. You know you need that degree. Focus. Don't worry about who is in the classroom. Don't worry about that small paycheck. Focus. Many of you here, the Lord already giving you instructions. You see yourself in class. You see yourself walking on, walking, what you call it? Walking, doing, walking the stage for graduation. You see yourself, you know, receiving those the, 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 the awards and the degrees and the this and the that. But you're still not moving. It's time to make a change. Many of you have been CNA for too long. It's time to go to nursing school. Many of you have been an assistant for too long. It's time to step up. Many of you have been a laborer for too long. It's time to get in line. Go back to school, study that trade, be your own boss. You need to step up. Amen. My CNA license is still active. Eh, hey, yes, it is still active. I all oh, listen to me. I've had it since 2003, 17 years. And it doesn't matter what kind of job I do. I always renew it. Why? Because I love to give care. Human services. Everything. You name it. Challenge yourself, people of God. Stop limiting yourself. Challenge yourself. Our pride is holding us back. Somebody said, woman of God, I'm late, but I made it. So you can go back and watch. Our pride is destroying us. It's time for us to make a change. Stop laying there in the bed and complain on the phone. Move and make a change. You need to live a different life. How is it going to be possible when you're still stuck, keeping pity party, complaining to everybody? Be quiet and do what you got to do. Yes. Put on those boxing gloves and get out and, and do what you got to do. But if you sit there and complain and, oh, I don't have this. I, I used to be that way. So I drop out of school. And I got back up because no one was going to say go back. People don't want you to make it. So they will be glad to give you a, a, a part-time job. Yes, they don't want you to go far. They'll encourage you while you're down there on the ground. So you're going to have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move like a soldier. And stop whining. Stop whining. Stop complaining. You know there are things for you to do. The harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty. But the laborers are few. The harvest is plenty. There is so much. There are so much. There will be so much, so much for us to do. But the laborers are few. Only a few of us will be obedient to God because we still don't believe we are struggling with our faith. We still don't believe that God is talking to us because this thing that God keeps telling me, it's too big, I'm not doing it. 
Oh, so you want to be a boss and you refuse to make boss moves. <laughs> Ow. You want to be a boss, but you don't want to make that boss move. You want to sit down and find a way to hustle off of somebody else. That's not boss move. Boss move. Boss don't rob anybody. You really want to be a boss. Make that boss move and stop trying to hustle off of somebody else. Stop trying to take away somebody's bread. You got to make a change in your life. You got to go forth. You got to do what you got to do. Enough is enough. Stop complaining. You're one foot in and you're one foot out. Today you're with God. Tomorrow you're doing something else. How are you going to receive your breakthrough? How will you receive your blessings? It doesn't matter what ministry you go to. If you're not ready, nothing will come. You got to be ready. You got to be encouraged. You can't live your life. Listen to me. There are some people that are not saved, but they want all the benefits of someone who is saved. How is that possible? There are some people that don't pray, but they want all the benefits that comes from a prayer warrior. If you don't pray, you cannot be jealous of an intercessor. If you're not saved, you cannot be jealous of a, a, a man of God or a woman of God if you're not saved. Because they are doing their part. You got to fill in the blanks in your life. Somebody said fill in the blanks. You have to fill in the blanks of your life. You want to live a married life, but you refuse to be married. So what is that going to make you? <laughs> you refuse to be married, but you want to live a married life. How, what is that going to make you? You refuse to pay tithes in church, but you want all the benefits that comes with tithing. You refuse to give, but you want all the things that come with giving. We're doing things backwards, people of God. And we cannot live our life like that. God is a just God. God is a just God. He is a faithful God. Some people want prophecy and they're not even saved. They're not even living a clean life and they want somebody to prophesy to them. So what are you think? What do you think this person is going to prophesy and tell you? Because you're not prepared to hear it. If you're not living the life to please God, don't tell nobody to prophesy to you. Because if they begin to tell you the truth, you're going to be torn up. If you're really expecting a prophetic word and you're not living your life to please God, then you're expecting to be shamed. Because the only thing that this person can tell is go and give your life to the Lord. Go clean up yourself. Somebody said, it's time for me to walk in my purpose and calling of God. Thank you, Rev, for this word. It's true. You cannot live your life. If you want to be a boss, you got to be making some boss moves. You cannot be a boss if you don't make those boss moves. People will use and abuse you. People will take advantage of you and disadvantage. People will trick you and scam you out of what you have. Out, you might have skills. God might bless you with skills, but you need backup. You need paperwork. You need, you need help. It's true. It is true. It's true. Like I said, I remember when I came to this country, I came to this country to be a physical therapist. The woman that I went to massage therapy school, she's here with us. First time I came to this country, I came here with her because I didn't have anywhere to stay. So I stayed with her and her boyfriend. Yes. 
She's on the life. Not lying. When I came to this country, we both graduated from massage therapy school. So we have to be motivated. And that was a long time. Uh, you know, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Many, many, many moons ago. No one can take the credit for what God is doing right here in, on this platform or in my life. No man, no woman can take the credit. Guess why? Because all this is the doing of God. I didn't come here for this. I came here to do something else. And this is what I'm now doing. Skills never leave you. Mind you, your skills will never leave you. But one thing I know, I've been to so many schools, but the best school that I've been to is Bible school. Because I'm moved. I am so moved by what God is doing. So if the Lord is urging you or nudging you, you know that little nudge, that little elbow you get sometimes? If the Spirit of the Lord is urging you to do it, try it. Or if there is something that you want to go back to school and do to level up. You know, you got great skills. God has blessed you and you want to exercise them. Go get certified. So you can be of good use to society. Because if you got skills and you don't, you're not certified, they're going to use you. Especially in a foreign country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. People of God, I learned so much. And I just want to share a little bit of it tonight. Be motivated. Be motivated. And that's all I got to say to you. Be motivated. You got great ideas. They can turn into reality. Fast and pray. God will help you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He will help you. There is nothing too hard for the Lord to do in your life. Be motivated. Be motivated. There are so much to learn than to sit in one place and, and, and uh, they even have free programs now in different areas because I've seen advertisements of some things that you can even study at home online free because of COVID-19. They got a lot of help, programs that will teach you stuff, self-help, and it's free. It's time to be motivated. And I just came out here tonight to encourage someone because a lot of people are be, have been discouraged. A lot of people have given up. They have lost hope because of COVID-19. When you didn't know that you're still alive, that means there is hope for you for tomorrow. God is not done with you yet, Sister Janetta. Sister Petronia, God is not done with you yet. Sister Raquel, God is not done with you yet. Sister Alicia Fo uh, Clark, God is not done. Sister Tamika Folks, God is not done with you yet. Sister Keisha, continue with what you're doing. God is not done with you yet. He's not. He is a God of many. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions, many. He is a God of many. He is a God of extraordinary. He said, I'll go above and beyond your imagination. So he is a God of many, extraordinary. He's a dependable God. He is a faithful God. Whatever he said, he will do it. He don't lie. He's a promise keeper. He's a covenant keeper. He is a healer. He is your doctor. He is your lawyer. He is your teacher. He is a wonderful counselor. He is your advisor. My God. Don't give up on him. Many of us, 
You, you go to court, you see some lawyer, they have different profession. You go to the doctor's office and you see a doctor. He was somebody else before he became a doctor. Mm -hmm. And this is what happening in our today's society. Don't give up. Be motivated. Make that step. And I came to tell you, you're not too old. You're not. You're not too old to make that change, Sister Anika. Do it. Sister Audrey, it's time to make a move. Sister Angela, there is hope for tomorrow. It is the word of God. Jesus, there is hope for tomorrow. Beverly, you will never stay at that job forever. That's not where you belong. And the God that you serve, he will elevate you in due season. But there are some things that you're going to have to do that is required of you. And when it's time, your daughter, you see how life is funny? Your daughter will help you to get some paperwork done. Because God is going to give you a new life. Just watch. Beverly Campbell, just watch. God is going to do something for you. And you don't have to worry because he is going to be with you the whole time. The same way he is with me here on social media, speaking to you people. And at the same time, I was writing my paper. And even when I mess up, I still was able to graduate. Yes, I was still able to graduate. Why? Because I'm faithful to God. This is nothing, this has nothing to do with bragging. This is helping someone who think that they'll never make it because of their hectic life. You say your life is too hectic. You'll never be able to accomplish anything. You are joking. You are joking. My God. Anything you're doing, there's always room for growth. If you are at a place, at a job, and there is no room for growth, don't think you're too old to start looking for greater heights, for higher heights to climb to. Don't stop looking. One and pray. One day, the right opportunity. You know, some of you are in some mediocre jobs why because god want the glory from your life and he's not getting it so you you won't grow because god is not getting glory once you begin to glorify god even when you take your exams and fail or are close to fail god will let you finish he will let you graduate mm-hmm I'm, I love to keep record of everything. And all my theses, they are in stock. So I stock them up. And every year, I would go and check the, the grade, my grade. That's all I'm interested in. You know, my GPA. Mm -hmm. My grades to see what, 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 I, what I did, what I did last year, how I'm doing. You know, I just want to make sure my IQ didn't drop. Those things, because I, I, I <laughs> when I was in the world, I was, you know, I, I love books. I love to read. I love to, to write those things. So I thank God for keeping me in my right mind. Hallelujah. He is a God of all things. Not just some things. All things. Hallelujah. He is a God of all. So whatever situation you are in and you think there is no hope, you are playing, you are joking. Step out and move out and see how God is going to fix you. Like I said, the reason why some of us are not growing is because of our disobedience. We don't believe that God can do it. So we are stuck. 
We are stuck until we accept the fact that he is God of our life, God of all things, the one who create heaven and earth, the one who is able to make all things new, the one who wake you up this morning and keeping you walking on top of your grave, the one who allow you to go to the sanctuary and not the mortuary. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes he's a faithful God and I love him because even when I make mistakes he correct me quick oh Holy Spirit will rebuke you like that quick people have got let me share something with you it's not just about prayer we, there are steps to take there are some principles to follow God is a just God it is, wisdom is a principal thing. But when you have no understanding, it keeps you in trouble. My God. I thank God for each and every one of you here. And you know, I thank God for those of you who apply the word of God to your life. Not everybody does because some people are still struggling with their faith. Some people are still struggling with their faith. So I'm praying for those that are weak in the faith. Some people say, you know, Pastor, I wish I could do it like you. It's not easy. No one said it's easy. But with God, all things are possible. But you got to first believe. And when you believe, it means you're exercising your faith. Because no one know what's around our corner. If I tell you something, this piece of paper, I have seen it when I was young, but I didn't know how and where I would be. I have seen this piece of paper when I was young, young girl in school, but I never know where I was going to be. I used to see my name. I used to see my name on the computer, but I did not understand it. I used to see my name in places, on posters, but I never understand it when I was young. And it was confusing because I thought I was a criminal. You see, the devil will put things in your mind when God is giving you a vision. The devil will cloud your mind with rubbish. I used to see my name in places that I've never been. And I thought I was crazy. Because I didn't understand that God was showing me pieces of things that he's going to do in my life. So when God visits you and he's trying to manifest himself, allow him, open up. Like I said, the mind is like a butterfly, a parachute. When you open the wings, it will float. That's the mind. People of God, take heed. Do something good with your life. Yes, if you are working at a job where there is no growth, it growth, it means something is wrong. Because if you have the ability to grow and they're holding you back. Like I said, the doctor fired me. And he said I can't help him because I have too much to offer. But because we were on the same level. It's just a different, yeah, discipline. We have two different disciplines. But I could tell him, you know, I, I could help him to talk, show him some things and, yeah, and vice versa. And it means that you can't afford to pay me. At the time, I needed that money. Sometimes you cannot let the money fool you. Turn to Jesus. When things don't seem right, turn to Jesus Christ. Don't let nobody trick you. He is able. God is able. He is able. You go to the court and you see the judge, the high court judge. He went to school or she went to school. You go to the doctor's office. And, you, and you, you, you had an appointment with a specialist. They went to school. 
they didn't just go and sit in that chair. They had knowledge, but they needed to go and get certified. Some people are born talented, but you need a piece of paper. Unless you're going to use your gift and don't get anything for it. Talking about your talent, what God give you. Natural born. You could be an artist. Amen. Somebody said faith without work is dead. My God. Thank you, Jesus. People of God, I just want you to be motivated. And I just want you to know the Lord loves you. And whatever he's talking on your heart, it means that he's getting ready to bless you. He wants you to be obedient. He wants you to wait on him. He said in his time, he will make all things beautiful. And look, be mindful. You could be doing something for the Lord. And at the same time, you are doing something for the Lord. The devil attack you or your children. You could be faithful to God and doing everything right. And there goes the devil attacking your children because he's angry at you. He can't handle you. So the children that are, you know, the weaker vessel in the family, he will attack them. Don't blame yourself when things go wrong. I used to do that. I did that. I blame myself when I see things happening. I say, how could God let this thing happen? But I came to tell the people of God, be strong and be strong in the Lord and be of good courage. Don't give up. Things might not be going well in your family right now, but don't give up. Don't give up. Focus on the big picture. Your life might not be how you were expecting it to turn out, but don't give up. Focus on the big picture. Suicide is not the end. Don't be weakened. Don't let the devil change you into somebody else. Don't walk away from your blessing. You know, this afternoon I went into Dunkin' Donuts and there was a lady in front of me in the line and she walked out. And then when I got outside, she was sitting outside on the ground and she was smoking and drinking coffee. And I don't know, but I just started to talk and I said, oh, you know, some people will just walk out of their home and never go back because things happen that they can't handle. Or some people have a decent job and they, they, they it's spiritual. They destroy them at work and they just go crazy. Some people leave home and never return. And you blame them and thinking that they are mean, but you don't know what they're going through. You see someone on the street, you never know what kind of demon they are fighting. But I came to encourage you, don't give up. Some people get weak and, 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 and sick because they're not making their goals. They're not attaining their goals and it destroy them. It destroy them mentally and physically destroy them they are not i know these things there are people out there that the devil will tell them to commit suicide because you know things are not where it's supposed to be or nobody don't love you i came to tell you jesus love you jesus love you it doesn't matter how bad life gets. He loves you. You may have plans and you, you somebody might, you know, walk away from you and break your heart. But there is always a second chance. He's a God. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But I just want you to know he is a God of second chance. Somebody might hurt you and, and in a bad way. And it makes you think that if you don't take those pills, you're not going to make it. And don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Jesus loves you. And that's all you need to know. Because it's, it is written. I encourage someone here tonight. You know, it's time to turn your life over to Jesus. It's time. You have tried everything. You have done everything. 
you, you have gone everywhere open your heart to Jesus when all else fails you he will never fail you I can tell you he will never fail you my five my last five years have not been an easy five years no everything was going good at my job until i started school they fire me and every job i've gone to ever since they fire me the devil was fighting my finances to destroy me from not having this this right here that needs to go into a frame the devil fight me so don't let him destroy you because you might be at the end of your your last dime your last dollar god is saying i want you to get to that point so you could reach out to me so i could hold your hand God is saying, when your money run out, you will turn to me like that woman with the issue of blood. She didn't have any money. And so she was on her bottom sitting down like this in the street. And, and she said, all I want to do is touch the hem of his garment and I will be healed. Maybe your finance need healing. Maybe your marriage need healing. Maybe your children need healing tonight. Maybe you need healing. And all he's saying, just touch the hem of my garment. Yeah. That all, that's all he's saying. Touch the hem. The hem. You know where the hem is? These strings that are hanging. Touch the hem of his garment. Just touch the hem of his garment. Many times, many times I look at my prayer shawl, they're dirty. Why? Because it's loaded with tears. I came here and I pray, but when I'm done, I go and cry because I got things to talk to God about and he took care of it. I just grabbed the hem and talked to him and cry to him. Tonight I'm here to tell someone, just just grab the hem of his garment. It will be well with you. It, it, it will be well with you. Just hold on to the hem of his garment. It will be well with you. Life might be beating your left, right and center. And the devil is saying, where is your God? You have gone to church. You have been going to church all your life. You have been giving that pastor gift. You have been paying tithes in church. Everybody know you because your tithes big. Everybody know you because you are the one that the pastor love. And you are always up front in church doing this and doing that. And now where is your God? I came to tell you he is right here. Just hold on to the hem of his garment and tell the devil to get behind you. Your God never leave. It's the plan of the devil to cloud your mind, to destroy you. But I'm here to tell you tonight, don't let go. I'm here to tell somebody tonight, don't let go because it is the plan of the enemy to break you. You are not easily broken. You were not built to break. Even if you get broken, you will never be shattered because the Lord is with you. His blood stain is all over you. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to tonight, but I came to encourage you. Don't let go. Be motivated and be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and be of good courage. Remember, he is your God. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. You might be sick in your body and you need healing. And tonight I came to tell you, just grab the hem of his garment and declare your healing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and I declare it done. Hold on to the hem. 
Hold on to the hem. He will never leave or forsake you. He has not gone anywhere. He said, I'm nigh unto them who call me. In truth, call him in truth. Call him in truth. He said, call unto me and I will answer. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. Don't give up. Don't give up on the Lord. Yes, you have issues. Yes, family members coming at you. Yes, the devil is provoking you. Yes, your flesh is rising upon you and you're single. All these things are happening. But I came to tell you tonight, hold on to Jesus Christ. Hold on. Somebody said, I remember that day when I was in pain, so much pain, and the Holy Spirit put his arms around me, and the pain left. I have never been there since that. People of God just believe. He said, call out to me in truth. I don't know who the Lord is using this message to touch, but I came to tell you, just be motivated. And tell the devil to get behind you. His season in your life is over. Tell the devil that his season in your life is over. Remind the devil that his season. Somebody go ahead and share this broadcast. Tell the devil that his season in your life is over. Tell the devil his time is up. Fire him. Fire him. I came to tell you tonight, don't give up on the Lord. Don't give up on the Lord. He is your God. He is all you have. He is all you have. He will never let you down. When your mother fail you, when daddy fail you, when auntie, sister, cousin, brother fail you, he will never let you down. He will never let you down. Hold on. Hold on to his unchanging hands. He won't change. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hold on to Jesus Christ. I just came to share my testimony tonight so someone could be motivated. While I'm here working, bringing you the word, studying the word, I was failing my exams. But the Lord was with me. Hallelujah. He was with me. And he took me through it. And this is to motivate many of you that are here that think that you can't do it. You can do it. You can do it. Listen. A king needs a queen. A queen as another queen, you don't tear off a queen's crown. You help another queen to fix her crown. Tonight, I came to motivate that queen inside of you and that king inside of you needs motivation that you can be who God called you to be and more. When God visit the king Ezekiah, he didn't just restore his health, he restored his money, 
He restored his authority. He restored power. And he gave him security. So God want to do so much in our life. All we got to do is be ready, be available. And when he sent messenger to talk to us, listen. Hallelujah. That's all we got to do. Just listen. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for each and every one of you here. This coming Friday, we are going on fasting. Hallelujah. And it's my prayer that when you go on this fasting, whatever you desire of the Lord, he will grant you. At the end of the fasting, make sure you have your prayer requests and you pray over it every day for the seven days. Write your prayer request down and pray over it for the whole seven days. Hallelujah. Yes, we're cutting that food in half from the 23rd to the 30th. We're going to cut down on our eating habit. We have to go and fast it for seven days. And when we get into November, we're going to go do the same thing. We're going to fast. And when we get into December, we are going to fast. And remember, two people will receive money. November, December, January. Onward. Two people will be blessed financially. The money is to open doors in your life financially. The money that you will receive from this ministry it will be used to open financial doors in your life. So once you receive the money, look for financial doors to open. That's what God is doing. The money is token to open financial doors for you. So two people will receive. People of God, we are collecting money for two people every month. Two families every month from this platform. They will be receiving it. God is faithful. And he will never disgrace us. So we know when it's time to release the money. They will be grateful. We know when it's time for them to receive the money. When the money is released in their life. They will be grateful. Because I know you are all faithful. The Lord love a cheerful giver. And you are faithful to God. So I trust that you will bless the ministry financially enough that it can be a blessing to two families. My God, I thank God for each and every one of you here tonight. Remember, go to the YouTube channel. It's Rev Joyce Lynn Radigan. Remember, we need more subscribers to the YouTube channel. And we are collecting donations to purchase an equipment. We're doing it here in the month of October. People of God, we need a decent equipment. Not, not like the one we have here because this one is broken. And I have to be doing some some fixing in order sometimes to get it to work. So we are, we are doing our best. The ministry is small. We are doing our best. So I encourage you, people of God, bear with me. We're trying to get an equipment. We're trying to purchase a decent equipment for the ministry, something that's reliable, that if I'm traveling, it's okay to travel with it. Hallelujah. If there is an emergency come up and we have to move to another point, yes, it is good to go. Because I remember the last time when I went to Florida, I took this with me and it wouldn't work. I couldn't get it to work no matter what I did. So I encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, let us come together as one and help the ministry to get better equipment. We need it. The ministry need it. It's a small ministry that was not asking for any help financially, but no, we need help. Two people will be receiving money. You understand me? From the ministry, two families. 
two separate families, one from one side of the world and one from another side. It doesn't matter where they are located, whatever God said, because God select the names of those on the platform that he wants to bless. Amen. So remember, stretch forth your hands financially and bless the ministry so we can give back in this COVID-19 we are able to give back to two families to be a blessing to them. Even if it's not a lot, it's still a blessing because it will open financial doors for them. Glory to God. And, and we can't afford not to get our blessings because charity brings forth blessings. A lot of you have stepped forward and I'm grateful for every penny that was sent towards the ministry, every dollar. I'm grateful. And I see, you know, a lot of people are praying because now people are saying, I want to be the next person. You never know. You might be the next person to be selected, one of the next person to be selected next month. You never know. And this is the thing that the Lord is doing in this time. And this is just one of the things that the Lord is doing in this time because I see a lot of things coming our way that God will be doing with this ministry. So people of God, stay tuned and be humble. Give humbly. Give without expectations. So when your name is mentioned, it's such a blessing that the Lord remember you. Amen. Mm-hmm. That the Lord will remember you. You see, what we're doing here is opening doors for the ministry. Mm -hmm. God is about to do some big things for us. So let us get ready with our $5, our $2, you know, our $1, our $100. It doesn't matter, $200, whatever the Lord. If he said give a thousand and you can do it, do it. Because you know what? When... God speak, it means that there is something big behind the scenes. Whatever God said, do it. He is planning to surprise you. God will never tell you to give a million and he give you half a million. He is, it's easier for him to give you 10 million because he said he's able to go beyond your imagination. So whatever you are doing, do it for the glory of God. Don't do it to please man. Don't do it to impress man. Impress God. When I was doing what I'm supposed to do, I didn't do it to do it for man because men and women laugh at me. They call me an idiot. I still receive phone calls from Jamaica today. Are you still in that church thing? Yeah. People still call me because they said they knew when I was in Jamaica, I was doing this. I was doing all kinds of stuff. I went to school for this. I went to school for that. Money was coming in. No, I'm in America. And I'm sitting in my home doing the work of God. So I encourage you, support the ministry. Order your prayer shawl. Order your anointing oil. Order your gift box. We have scarves from Israel. Everything here is from Jerusalem. People of God, go ahead. Let your giving bless God. My time is up. I have to go. God bless each and every one of you. I thank you for your time and your donations. And you know, two people were selected because a woman of God, she sent donations to the ministry. And she said, woman of God, She said, woman of God, let me see if I can find my, my stuff. She said, woman of God, I'm sending this money and give two, select two people. And I'm saying it now because she just popped up. She said, so in two people's lives. And I'm going to select two people. Number one, I will um, select Sister Raquel. Raquel in Florida, and I will also select Sister Elaine in Massachusetts. Let, let me write it down. Yes, the woman of God sent the money, but oh dear, I did not remember. I did not remember 
to write it down so let me do it now right now yes yeah, she said woman of god select two people mm -hmm. so sister raquel i think a ten dollar seed was sown in your life and sister elaine forbes Sister Elaine, this $10 that is sown in your life is for healing. Sister Raquel Burke, this $10 that was sown in your life is for deliverance. Okay, so now I think I did what I'm supposed to do because I totally forget to write it down. I never wrote it down, but as soon as I saw her here, the woman of God that um, sent the donations, and she said, woman of God sent to two let me see i i, I, I don't want to make any mistakes because i keep record of everything hallelujah i do she said send to two people on the platform yes i am being obedient this way i'm donating towards the and i'm giving 30 for myself and 20 for two people on the platform who is ah yes so i know sister elaine for healing and sister raquel glory to god amen so i'm being obedient i'm done and i left it right there hallelujah you see whatever you do you can change it You cannot change it so it is final i thank god for his goodness and his mercy upon this ministry and the things that he's doing in this time glory to god people of god my time is up god bless you all that was my last assignment hallelujah yes that was my last assignment that i mentioned the last announcement Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, um, the lady, you know, she was very um particular. She sent the money and she told me what to do. Ten dollars each. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, people of God, I have to go. I'll be back tomorrow. So I will see you then. Hallelujah. I will see you. My time is up. Remember, you know your assignment. Mm. Hallelujah. You know your assignment, people of God. Somebody said, I tell you, God is doing great things on this platform. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have yourself a wonderful evening. And God bless you all. And I will see you tomorrow. Stay blessed. And if you came late, you can always go back and watch from the beginning. Because I share a little bit of testimony. Amen. Because it brought conviction. So, yeah. God bless you.